What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the Crypto Junkie channel. I got a very important video for you today. We're gonna to talk about crypto and re-education because I think that a lot of people in crypto have lost the fucking plot. And I wanna talk about that today. So right now, depending on what side of the fence you're sitting on, you're either sad that the, the Bitcoin ETF was uh, denied again. They can do this. They can basically keep delaying this and delaying it. Inevitably, it will be released. And everyone, I don't know, this is so weird to me, right? Like when CME and CBOE dropped in 2017, I was, you know, I was just getting into to crypto back then. I was, I got in the July before that happened, right? So I was in it for like maybe not even six months. And I can admit I was clueless. I can admit I was dumb, right? And it seems like it's that all over again. So let's fundamentally understand what's happening here is they are trying to take Bitcoin and any other vehicle that will allow it. And they are trying to wrap a paper bullshit, fake, infinitely inflatable version of that around the surface. And you guys are fucking happy about this. You guys are celebrating this and welcoming it and, you know, putting out the fucking flags and just come on in, guys. Come on, come on in. Yeah, come on in. Make the ETFs. What is wrong with you? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever looked at the gold and silver charts before the ETFs were rolled out? Did you ever see what the trajectory looked like, what the path for gold and silver looked like? So it's partially like, I make fun of this too, right? Like Peter Schiff and, and boomers and you know, your gold and silver, it's like the same price today than it was 10 years ago. Peter Schiff was just celebrating the fact that, you know, gold went up fucking $18 an ounce the other day when Bitcoin dropped like $5,000, $6,000. So yeah, it is kind of funny, like, dude, your shit went up $18, like, whoopee doo. Like, with the cost of inflation and the price of living right now, that really literally means fuck all. But we're doing the same thing with crypto, and everyone's, like, celebrating it. So obviously, lessons haven't been learned. Nobody really understands what the fuck is going on and what they're talking about. So, like, I want to start making some educational videos like this, where it's, like, t kind of tough love, where I'm, I'm giving you the truth, I'm giving you the facts, and we can kind of talk through this, right, without being too crass. So... The ETFs are a bad idea. If you want to know why, if you want me to hold your hand, I'm not gonna do it. But I will suggest to you to go back and look at the silver charts and the gold charts, and then just Google, when did the gold ETFs get approved? Do your own research, take a look at that chart. But I can tell you, I can assure you right now, and you can confirm this if for anybody that's in the gold and silver markets right now, you can confirm this in two seconds. Let me ask you a question. How much is spot silver and gold selling for? How much was it selling for three, four months ago in the height of the fucking pandemic? And how much was it selling for on the paper ETF markets in a traditional legacy markets? How much was that selling for versus what you're actually paying for on the ground for the real physical shit? Night and day difference. $60 silver, $40 silver, $50 silver. We're out of silver. You can't get any silver. But yet, if you ask somebody, what's the price of silver, where are they going to go to look at the price? They're going to go look online, yeah? On TradingView. And they're going to be quoting you the wrong fucking price. The same thing is happening right now with Bitcoin. Futures was the first start of control. 2017, the narrative shifted. I don't know who it was. Some guy, there's this famous saying. He said, we'll tame Bitcoin. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Let me show you how simple this can be. Let me literally Google this for you. We will tame Bitcoin. Who was it? Here it is right here. Oh, convenient. The CME group's Leo, whatever the fuck his name is, back in 2017. Oh, we'll tame Bitcoin. You sure will, bud. You absolutely did. You ushered in the first control mechanism. And after that, that's when all the banks could actually start to enter the market. They couldn't before that. But as soon as the futures was rolled out, now they could slowly start to enter. And they did, but not before they drove the price down. We all remember the $3,000 march, right? So the next thing is like, even just look at, let's just take a step back here. Even just look at this site, Coindesk. Look at every single one of these sites. They're all laid out the same way. They're all just the next iteration of the same system, the same power grab, the same mainstream media, but frame that they're not. Frame that they're for the people. Frame that they're at the cutting edge. You know, we're at the cutting edge with this crypto stuff. No, you're not. Like, look who is backed and now funded. Every single major cryptocurrency news site. Look who's given them money. Not your friends. The same people that you go and post shit about. You know, maybe they're stretching headlines. You know, hunt for clicks and attention. Maybe they've, you know, helped contribute to deleting content online, getting people banned online. Those same companies that you're complaining about in one breath are the same ones who funneled and gave money to these guys to make their sites look almost the exact fucking same. Look at that. The exact same layouts the exact same shit, just duplicated over. Now, let's pivot here because this is the next important topic to talk about is this coin ticker at the top, right? What did I do? What does everyone still do to this day? Do you know that there's still like big crypto influencers that where they start you off in their videos every single fucking day is right here. 
CoinMarketCap, the most trusted aggregator in the space, right? The most trusted aggregator. Did you know that Binance spent over a billion dollars to buy this? Why would an exchange buy a coin aggregator? Let me ask that again, in case you don't understand what the fuck is going on here. Why would an exchange buy a coin aggregator site for $1 billion? There's not software companies with real physical products selling for that much right now. And this was a couple years ago. Why did they do this? Now, what has been the slow shift and a slow change away from what CoinMarketCap used to look at? Well, now they got more dog shit sitting right in front of your face, just like the casinos, just like the online gambling sites used to have. It's the same mistake made over again. They care about advertising dollars and promoting Binance because they're owned by Binance. They are not unbiased. They're not running down the middle, you know, fair, even playing field. Get out of here. Their job is to pump Binance and anything they don't like and anything they don't understand, they remove. So here's the number one reason why you should stop following CoinMarketCap and all these idiots who are starting off today. Oh, look at today. Well, Bitcoin's up 1%. This one's up 2%. Look at this. What, what the fuck is this? Crypto weather? Who cares? If you want to know what's going on in the space, look at total volume. T-O-T-A-L in trading view. Look at total two. That's everything minus Bitcoin. So that tells you what? Alts. Total and total two. That's the only two things you need to look at. Yes. So you need to you need to understand looking at a chart. You need to understand the basics of like up and down, momentum, price movements, right? Which you should understand if you've been in crypto since the same time that I have, 2017. If not, shame on you. You're still just speculating, treating this like a gambling. Like you have an addiction. You have a fucking problem, dude. Because that's not what we're trying to do here. I thought like in 2017, remember all the shit we were talking about? We we're talking about sovereignty. We we're talking about freedom. This shit ain't representative of that. What we're looking at right now on this crappy little site, that is not indicative of that whatsoever. The rug pull already happened. The rug pull was all the VCs coming in, all the banks coming in, all the power coming in, the Obama era this, the Clinton era that, that moved into a place of position in link in your fucking favorite DeFi project. Slowly getting them, yeah, well, you know, maybe we should just communicate with the SEC and, and you know, try and get this. And, you know, we're really just going to try and um, placate to them because we need them and they need us, right? So let's, you know, give and take a little bit, right? We all win, win, win in the end. This is the wording. This is the languaging that they're using right now in meetings with everything that you love. Ave, Compound, YFI, all of this shit is going through the same conversations right now. The DAO boards with the 13-year-olds on them, do you think that they stand a chance from an intellectual level understanding what the fuck is going on? No, they do not stand a chance, dude. They are bait. They are small fish that's about to get eaten by the shark. So going back to this site, the main reason why you shouldn't believe in it or even look at it or any of the gurus talking about this. This is CoinMarketCap.com, yes? This is Yahoo Finance, yes? Where are they pulling the data from? CoinMarketCap. So that means they're pulling the API from CoinMarketCap. How is it that they're pulling the CoinMarketCap data via API and it's different on this page than it is on this page? Why? So that means that this page right here is lying to you, yes? That means that this website right in front of your fucking face is lying to you. In the same way that you're getting pissed off that the fucking politicians are lying to you, right? That's okay. We can get mad about that. We can get loud about that. But coin market cap, nah, bro. Come on, Jay. Don't get political. Let's leave politics out of this. Everything is interlinked. They have fucking merged everything. They have destroyed everything that you wanted politics to stay out of. They have made sure that they're going to come and shit on your fucking front yard. They've made sure of it. So that tells you that they are lying. And here's the biggest indicator of that. And I've pointed this out before. How come Hex is right here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which they just made an adjustment. Everyone just, all the coin market aggregators just made an adjustment. That's why Hex is down lower. Hex was number three. But no, we can't have that because a completed product, not project, no roadmap, completed, right? 99.9% .9 uptime. We can't have that in the top 10 because it's too confusing because every single other fucking website in the top 10 has a roadmap, doesn't it? Well, we got these updates we're gonna roll out. Everything does. Bitcoin's got updates they're working on. Taproot, if you wanna know what's going on with Bitcoin updates and where they're trying to go with it, the Taproot upgrade, you need to dive deep into that to understand what the fuck's going on there because it's about to get diverted again. It's about to get hard forked again into the next direction. You gotta understand that if you're gonna be in this game, yes? Or are we just speculating? Or are we just gambling? Hoping, you know, throwing shit at the wall, seeing what sticks. That's the strategy, huh? It's okay, this is the biggest one. Can't have that in the top 10, even though it still is. Where is it here? Number eight is, that doesn't make sense. Okay, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna just calm down. What is Hex then? Where's Hex at? Let's see, where's Hex? Look at that, fucking 201. Number 201, how is it possible that it's number eight on the API and on the website that makes the API is number 201? Who's lying? Who's more likely to be lying right here? Yahoo Finance, who's the dog shit of dog shit for fucking search engines, doesn't give a fuck. Or this site that's owned by Binance. Oh, you guessed it, this one. And then if you're CoinGecko, you don't even list. You don't even list anything. It's not even ranked. It's got no information at all. 
when all these metrics that we all pretend matter, like market cap, even though that doesn't mean shit, fully diluted, you know, versus regular market cap, right? We pretend all these things matter when they don't. Okay, back to the top 10. How many of these top 10 have a completed product? It's launched, no roadmaps, no changes. We're just, we're gonna run it. And if hacks come up, that's different. Or if vulnerabilities are exposed, then yes, we're gonna jump in and we're gonna fix those things. But how many of these products are completed product? Out there working, very few. And then how many of them, well, let's take this a couple different directions. One, first direction is how many of them do you think are being honest about circulating supply and how hard easy slash, how hard slash easy is it to track circulating supply? I'm talking to you, Tether talking to you, USDT. There wouldn't be a million CoffeeZilla videos about this fucking USDT if it wasn't a big scam. But in Asia, they don't care. There's billions, trillions of dollars of this stuff moved around every single day in USDT, in Asia, because they don't care. Look at the 24 hour volume. Is that 64 billion? Circulating supply, they just keep inflating circulating supply of these things. Solana, remember Solana was shut off for a full day. SAM project, yeah, FTX project. Maybe FTX, because FTX doesn't own Solana, but they're big involved in it, right? FTX platform itself, trading platform, has all kinds of issues still. But yet they got money to go and spend how many hundreds of millions of dollars to, to sponsor Miami basketball team, right? Put themselves on all these billboards, baseball games, football games. Maybe we need to chill out and fucking fix the, the product, right? Fix the website. How many of these have a completed product? Doge was the only one. But you know what? They actually recently changed that. Well, it was one of the only ones. Doge now has a fucking foundation. Elon Musk's attorney or something is on the board. And now they're going to try and revamp it and take it in a new direction. An actual coin that was created to be utter dog shit and a joke to make fun of cryptocurrencies has now been revamped and we got a fresh roadmap. Oh man, because you know what? Nothing brings something back from the dead like a fresh roadmap, baby. Just change the name like Facebook to Meta, put a fresh roadmap on it and bang, valuations go up. Why is it like that? So what I'm looking at here, and this is these are like fundamental things that we need to talk about again and again and again and again and again and again because every time you watch something like this, every time you, what I, my goal is, is every time you listen to a video like this, is that you should be taking something different away from this. Like the first time you hear this, you're like, damn, dude. And you, you, there's one big piece that like hits you right in the face. And you know people like this. These are the videos that you tend to watch more than the entertainment stuff. The entertainment stuff is like I'm eating. I, I want to be entertained right now and I know it. And I know I'm watching bullshit. And then there's like the stuff that hits you. And every time you watch it, it hits you differently. This is true for books too. I'm sure right now there's books that you've read for your whole life. Every time you read it, it hits you differently. This is true for like Hindu books, Buddhist books, right? Really good personal development books because every time you read it, it's like you're at a new level, you're at a new phase in your life and so you're gonna read it completely differently with a different lens. How is that even possible, by the way? The same set of words said the same way, haven't changed in ink and yet you're getting a completely different feeling off of it. So these are the conversations I wanna have. This is the whole point of bringing crypto junkies back is because like, we're way off course with this shit, way off course. So like the fundamental reason we have these sites doesn't even make sense. Who gives a shit about coin market cap? But you see, we have to have something like this because all of these are promise coins. They all promise to do this down the road. Give us your money and we promise we'll launch electric vehicles. Give us your money and we promise we'll launch a new ecosystem and it'll be cheaper than ETH, right? And we've all learned this. I thought we already learned this through 2018, 2019, the ICO bubble. And all they did was change it to IPO or whatever the fuck they call it, IDO now, who cares? The same thing though, right? But wait a second, it's the same game just with a different name. So it's clear that first off, renaming your shit does work. So, and we've all seen this with Facebook too. Renaming it from Facebook, who's got all this negative baggage to it, to Meta absolutely works. Fun fact, think about this for a second. Everybody who's born today that sees it as Meta will never know it was Facebook. Let that sink in. Everyone born today that sees it as Meta will never know its history and will never know it was called Facebook before. Crazy, right? They'll never know about all the censorship, all the crazy shit that's been going on, the oligarchy, None of it. So same thing here. These are all coins that are like making promises just out in the future. So we have to track these metrics because there's no other way we can track shit because they refuse to, there is no earnings calls, right? There is no product really to be able to make, like come out and say, we sold this many widgets. And so this is our, you know, this is what we're sitting at. And these are our profit expectations, right? Here's where all of our materials are coming from. There's no real easy way to figure that out. So that's why these sites have stuck around. We've just duplicated the same problem over again in legacy markets, but in cryptocurrency. And then we're, you know, we're polishing a turd here and pretending like it's something different. It's not, it's the same shit, dude. It's the same shit. So we need to fundamentally like, because what I see happening here is there's more and more people getting lost, more and more lost in this game, right? So you need to start looking at these deeper, these deeper questions and these deeper things because like you need to decide where you want to play in this game. Right? Do you want to be one of the speculators that has to watch a thousand wallets to understand where your Shiba, who might dump on you? 
right? And then there might be connections to the original contract, to the CEO, to the dev team, but you just don't know it because they aren't publicly tagged addresses, right? They're just regular addresses with no, no name on it, no tag, but they might be holding billions, trillions of dollars. You don't know. So it's like, we're all signing up for this shit and speculating on this. And we don't even really know the rules in the full game, but yet you're willing to speculate on it. How is that any different than gambling? How's that any different than betting on a sports team? At least then you know your true parameters. Here, you don't even know how many addresses hold, you know, 90 or 80% of the coins. You should. In most cases, in most things in this top 10, there is 100 wallets or less that own 99% of the coin. That's just how it is. I should say 90% or more. Yeah, to be fair. And by the way, Hex on that list is number 20. 47% of the supply is owned by the top 100. So the point is, is that like this isn't even an accurate way to weigh things out. But if you're going to be playing in this game, you need to know how many addresses are holding what and you need to be able to track their movement in some sort of way. But we don't do that. Instead, we come here and we look at, you know, what, what's the price today? And we're pricing things in U.S. dollars still. But hold on. I thought cryptocurrency as a whole was supposed to be the fiat killer. It was supposed to be the whole new system. So then why is everything still valued in U.S. dollar? So how is this any different? How is this any different than what's there already? It's not, dude. We're all just fucking lying to ourselves. It's the same thing. And now the, the next and probably the biggest question and takeaway is how do you measure a project that is a product? It is completely finished. You're not gonna increase circulating supply like US dollar tither because we can make an argument it's a completed product, bro. It's just a stable coin. Yes, but they're constantly printing more, aren't they? They're inflating the, the currency, aren't they? ETH in their games that they're playing right now. They will not hard fork to 2.0 until they've burned off, you know, however much percentage of 1.0. So what are they doing? They're just trying to lock up as much supply as they can so that they stay in power and you do not. How's that decentralized? Bitcoin, miners are in control, not you. You weren't involved in the hard fork conversations, were you? You were involved in, in the whole thing when um, Bitcoin cash and, and that happened. You were involved in that. I remember that going down. I was not invited to that conversation, were you? So how is that decentralized? If the miners are the ones, well, there are big whales that dictate price movement, right? How do we track all the miners? Well, there's tools now, but up to 2020, there was no tools to track miners. Imagine that. We were all playing in this game and not even knowing when miners were dumping on our fucking heads. Crazy, right? Like none of this shit makes sense. None of this shit is like cutting edge, tip of the spear, you know, kind of um, groundbreaking, earth breaking, earth shattering technology. It's just different style of shit that smells the same, but we've tagged it with a different name. That's the question I leave you is where should completed products, how should those be valued? How, what metrics matter with those? I'd argue none because if the product is finished and we're not inflating supply in any sort of way and we're not making any changes, then it doesn't matter. We don't need to track anything because yesterday it's doing the same thing as today, right? So outside of any hack, what do you need to really pay attention to? Outside of, you could pay attention to uh, blockchain movements. You could get real good at Etherscan or whatever you know network it's on, whatever uh, chain it's on, and you could get really good at looking at that. But other than that, what actually matters with looking at your completed product coin? Nothing. I woke up today and it's doing the same shit it said it was gonna do yesterday. Oh my God, thank the Lord. There's, it doesn't sleep, it doesn't need a break, it doesn't need a rest. It's doing the same shit today that it said it would do yesterday. Next week, it's going to do the same exact shit that it said it's going to do today. Why do we need to track it? What do we need to track? Outside of wallet movements, so that you can maybe try and peg when it's going to dump so that you can buy more. But why, outside of that, what else do you need to track with it? Makes sense, right? Top, top addresses, see what's happening there, you know, check in on that maybe, you know, once a week. But you see how boring that would be, right? And we need action. We need metrics. You don't understand. We need baseball cards. We need teams, right? I'm team ETH. You're team Binance. We can't be friends. I'm BSC Network, you're Solana, we can't be friends. No, mine is gonna change the world. No, yours is gonna change the world. If Mark Cuban comes in and buys my shit and sells it next week, he's the fucking devil because he's gotta die on a sword. He buys it once, he can never, ever, ever sell because we're not here to make money. We're here for ideology, right? That's the fucking bullshit. No, I'm team Doge. No, I'm team Shiba because Shiba's better than Doge. No, Floki's the next Doge. No, Floki Woki is the next fucking Doge Shiba. What the fuck is going on here, dude? And you know what's gonna happen? You know where all this is gonna end? If you thought 2017 and the rug pull that happened after that was getting wrecked, this is gonna be 10 times worse, 100 times worse. Because everyone's gonna get wrecked. When the fucking JPEGs are worth nothing and they're selling them for fucking, you know, ounces of a dollar, then that's when you buy them. You don't buy them right now. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this rant, your thoughts on this topic. This is the shit I feel like we need to be talking about. This is the stuff that none of the fake gurus on YouTube are talking about because God forbid they tell you the truth. God forbid they tell you how fucking stupid all this shit is because then they stop making money. And considering they charge anywhere between a thousand to fifty thousand fucking dollars to do a review for a coin, well, I've been on tech charges a hundred thousand dollars, believe it or not. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah, outside of that, if they did that, they wouldn't make money because they don't make money investing, and they don't make money. Definitely don't make money trading. They make money off of you. They make money off of suckers buying their bullshit. 
All right, comment below. Like it if you want this to get up in the algorithms, get up in their face with it. This is how we do it, right? This is the shit you want to share. This is the stuff you want to start picking apart and saying, hey, whoa, 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 what the fuck's going on over here? Yeah, this is the stuff that matters. Subscribe if you like this. We'll be around. Okay, see ya. Perfect.